Now I know y'all were expecting to wake up and hear Yams talk to you about something for a list, but apparently he's a little hungover for the holidays, so he tagged old Spite in to read the Monday list. And last week we covered some great ways to light a little cash on fire by doing something dumb to your bike, and this week we're covering the best ways to light some cash on fire by buying useless gadgets and gizmos for your bike. That's right, you're flush with all of those Christmas checks from your parents and grandparents, and instead of doing something smart like putting that money towards your loan or into a savings account, for a new bike so you can finally level up from that crappy little Ninja 250, you're going to attempt to add some new tech to an old motorcycle and claim that it's better than buying a modern bike using some real dumb mental gymnastics. Well, if you're planning to go that route, we've collected a list of seven of the dumbest, dorkiest, or just plain useless things you can put on your bike or your gear. These are the kind of things that might sound good on paper, but we've got more elegant solutions to, or the sort of thing that just solves a problem that it made up in a a classic infomercial way. Some of them are concepts are still in development, but don't expect them to reshape your riding experience. More likely, they're just going to add one more layer of complexity to your bike, which, let's be honest, bikes are complicated enough already without a bunch of jury-rigged electrical garbage piggybacking on your bike. Where possible, we're going to give you a simpler and better alternative because I want to save you some money. I'm just that nice. The first thing on today's list is a heads-up display, or HUD, for your motorcycle. Do you remember Google Glass? Yeah, me neither. But if you do a quick internet search, you'll see a bunch of goofy looking stock footage people wandering around with a pair of nerd goggles on. And this is the same thing, but in bike form. Here's how they work. You take a little projector and mount it somewhere on your helmet. Some of them go right in the chin bar, and some of them are small enough to actually fit inside your visor. But in either case, they reflect a little bit of information on a screen back at your face, showing you an itsy bitsy little map layout or showing you who's calling or whatever. Here's the problem with these systems. They're super Super heavy. There's a few companies out there that are making helmets with integrated HUDs in them, and they weigh way more than a normal motorcycle helmet, and they rarely meet ECE standards, and they run hot as hell since the venting goes to cooling the computer and not your noggin. If you get one of the bolt-on ones, it increases drag on your helmet and increases wind noise since there's a big chunky computer bolted to the side of your nice aerodynamic helmet. Not to mention that setting up the screen is time consuming since you need to adjust the angle and focus to make sure you can actually see it. And if you shake your helmet mid-ride, you're gonna have to pull over and do it all over again. The main thing that makes these gadgets a waste of money is they don't do anything that a handlebar phone mount doesn't already do for way cheaper. And speaking of handlebar phone mounts, Rockform makes the best one out there. Their phone cases are drop tested from six feet and have a small form factor in it so that they can fit in your pocket without having that big bulky look. And they're packing a phone safe magnet so you can stick it right to your bike while you're working on it. Not only that, but it screws into the aluminum base so you can see your phone while you ride. It has a bunch of joints so you can get just the right viewing angle, but once you tighten it up, it doesn't vibrate or wiggle out of place. It'll hold your phone tighter to your handlebars than the first time you jumped on a leader bike and the world went full plaid you experienced what a 3 second 0 to 60 time actually feels like. Best of all, it's way cheaper than a heads up display for your helmet, especially when you click that link down below and use the code YN25 to get 25% off your order. Do yourself a favor and skip the nerd goggles, just get yourself a rock form mount. You won't regret it. Number two, automatic brake lights. Now I know what you're thinking. Hey Spike, that sounds like an amazing safety feature. Now I can engine brake all day without having to worry about getting rear-ended. And yeah, they can help, but the main issue is that they make you lazy. These automatic brake lights are usually tied into your battery or they have their own little batteries that you need to change from time to time. And they use accelerometers which sense when your bike is slowing down and they light up just like a brake light would. But therein lies the problem. It doesn't matter if you're downshifting and engine braking or if you're just rolling off the throttle, they light up all the same. Some of them have adjustable settings to make them a little less sensitive to changes in speed, but they still require tweaking and testing. But how do they make you lazy? Well, remember how you've got that rear foot brake that you never use? That lever is super important for slow speed maneuvers or when coming into a turn because it adds a different braking force to your bike. Used in conjunction with the front brake, the rear brake can slow you down a lot quicker and add stability to your bike, or you can lock it up and do some six skiddies into a stoplight. It's also a very important way to communicate 
communicate with drivers behind you since tapping the rear brake lever will instantly turn on your brake lights. But if you don't have to worry about it, it gives you one more reason not to touch your rear brake. Not to mention that you're spending money on doing something that your bike already does for free. If you actually want to learn how to be a good motorcycle rider and improve your skills, don't be lazy and rely on sensors to do your job for you. Just move your right foot a little and actually use your rear brake. As a bonus, I'm going to include helmet-mounted brake lights as well, which basically do the same thing. Except in a lot of places, having colored lights on your helmets can be illegal. Yes, it adds some visibility in low-light conditions, but your head moves around an awful lot and can trip sensors, thus confusing drivers around you. Once again, just use your rear brake. Number 3. Communicator and Camera Combos This might sound like a neat way to get a motovlogging setup in one small package, but trust me my dude, this is a quick way to get potato quality video, and it's just one more thing you have to worry about with your comm system. Now I've been motovlogging for about a year now, and if you allow me to put my veteran motovlogging hat on for just a minute and explain in detail why this is trash, I'll save you some cash, and not only that, I'll make your videos look better at the same time. Now here's the first thing, the integrated camera is never as good as an action camera like a GoPro, which you can actually get for pretty cheap now nowadays if you want them used, and you can't adjust the settings the way you could if you wanted to get some pro looking footage. There's an amazing article on Revzilla talking about the best way to set up a GoPro written by the guy who films all of Zack and Aerie's videos, and all that cool stuff that he mentions? Yeah, you can't do it with a comm system camera. Secondly, you can't adjust the angle, and you get that weird side-mounted look, which doesn't look as good as a chin mount. If you want to try your hand at capturing some clean-looking, high-quality riding footage, just get a used GoPro and a chin mount. It never pays to have one crazy complicated device that attempts to do everything, but rather a few specialized devices that do one thing super well. Number 4. Speakers I know this one is aimed right at the heart of every cruiser and Busa boy out there, and we did install some speakers on our shop Hayabusa as a joke, but putting speakers on your motorcycle is a stupid waste of money. First of all, they're big and bulky and take up a ton of room on your handlebars, which is fine if you're riding around on some chromed out dad cruiser, but if you're on a smaller bike, you're going to crowd your handlebars. Secondly, they sound like crap, and I know I might be sounding a bit like an audiophile here, but if you put these speakers next to any halfway decent desktop speaker. It's going to sound a little tinny and almost like you bought them from Amazon for less than $100. Even if you went to your Harley dealership and dropped $1,000 on a brand new set of boom performance speakers for your Batwing fairing so you can blast a butt rocket at 120 decibels and hear it over the sound of your screaming Eagle Freedom Cannon straight shot exhaust because God forbid you miss the solo in Bad Moon Rising. Now I know the true cruiser boys out there are already typing their comments saying that a helmet mounted speaker system requires them to actually wear a helmet and they don't want to wear a helmet because they never crash and they know what they're doing and they've been riding for a million years without a license. And to that I say, just wear a helmet my dude. Yeah the chin strap might get caught in your beard but at the very least you won't be picking bugs out of your teeth. Also it means that you can actually have good speakers and not have your music sound like trash. The only problem is that since it's in your helmet, all the cars around you won't be able to hear your music, so how will they know if you're a real boy or not? Number 5. Self-Canceling Turn Signals Another Cruiser Boy specific piece of tech, but I've seen a lot of people attempt to put aftermarket self-canceling turn signals on their bike and they never work, or they forget that they put them on and they go to cancel their turn signals and reactivate it and ride miles down the road with their blinker on. I have the same issue with self-canceling turn signals that I do with those automatic brake lights, in that they make a rider lazier. You need to be paying attention to what you're doing and not rely on some gizmo to do something that you should already be doing anyway. I mean, they do ingrain turn signal etiquette into you during the MSF course for a reason, and by adding some self-canceling system, you're basically unlearning a good habit for no reason other than you want to be lazy and not move your thumb a little. Come on, my dude. Just don't be lazy. Number six, automatic chain oilers. Yep, you heard me right. There is such a thing as an automatic chain oiler, which dispenses a steady drip of oil onto your motorcycle's chain. Now this is stupid with two O's for a whole lot of different reasons. But first and foremost is the lubrication is not the main reason you put oil on your chain. And all these products claim that they increase lubrication leading to increased chain life. Secondly, why would you install something that by definition shoots a lubrication 
broken anywhere near your rear tire while you're riding. That just sounds like a recipe for disaster. Finally, lubing your chain only takes about 10 minutes if you're doing a thorough job, and even less than that if you half-ass it. By the way, chain cleaning is an easily half-assable job. Just clean the crap off it and slap some lube on there. Lastly, if you never have to clean and lube your chain, chances are you're going to forget to check your chain's health, and that can lead to a whole bunch of other problems that we discussed last week. This is absolutely not the place where you should be looking to save yourself time. And honestly, you're not saving yourself that much anyway. Just clean your chain and then complain about it to your buddies at bike night, or post about it on Instagram with clean chain club hashtag for free brownie points from Ari Henning. Number 7, Aftermarket Dashboards. I know this one might surprise you seeing as how Ryan F9 said that it was a game-changing mod, but honestly, I don't see the point. Sure, you can add a whole bunch of extra sensors to your bike, but if they weren't there in the first place, you probably don't have to worry about it. Not to mention that when you're riding, you don't want to be looking at your dashboard anyway, and you need to be looking at the road ahead. Sure, maybe you're a stunt boy on a DRZ400 and you looped it and it somehow landed right on the dashboard, so you need a replacement. In that case, spending a couple hundred bucks on a new dash is well worth it. But take it from me, a guy who owns a DRZ with one of these phony sensors on there, it never really works all that well, and to be honest, I don't really care about my tack on a DRZ anyway. If you're thinking about putting one of these on your bike, I highly recommend not spending the cash. Instead, if you want a gear position indicator or a tachometer on your bike, buy those individually. They're easier to install, and they tend to be way cheaper than replacing the whole dashboard. Just maybe don't expect them to work perfectly. Trust me, they're, they are a little bit janky. Fact, the dot over the lowercase i or j is called a tittle and the phrase to a T is actually derived from to a tittle. Goodbye. Hey, you adorable little squid. Thanks for watching the video. Why don't you click on this one right here and keep watching? Don't worry, I'll wait. Just like this. Click the video. Do it now.